Welcome to Microcap Tutorials. We're going to be talking about default conditioning for a high side PMOS or a P channel MOSFET in the high side. We have a 1K resistor as our load, a 12 volt battery, and we have a voltage source pulse that goes from 0 to 12 volts with a period of 500 micro and a, I'm sorry, a pulse width of 500 micro and a period of 1 millisecond. So essentially, here, when, when I have a zero here or when I have a lower potential than the threshold, this device is going to turn on and when I have a voltage that matches the battery or is greater than it, um, this device is going to turn off. And that's great. That's a normal operation. We should expect that. Let's run the simulation. Here we have that input pulse. We have the output response in the voltage, and then we have the output current as it goes through the load. And that's great, but the initial, the initial conditions can mess us up sometimes. So if you have a lack of charge buildup on the gate for this P-channel device, uh, that can create a potential difference between the battery uh, or the source and the gate, which could create an inadvertent turn-on situation. So generally we don't like that, and oftentimes at startup it's very difficult to determine what the presence of charge is. Do I have a charge buildup here or do I have an absence of charge? And I can't know that. So what we do is we, we explicitly define the state of the MOSFET at the beginning. And uh, this could also happen if the drive gets disconnected. So if the drive somehow loses its signaling source, it'll resort to the default condition, which is nice. Uh, so it's kind of like an error or fallout or a fail safe that we can create in our system. So most of the time, we're going to connect it like this. We're going to connect the resistor between the gate and the source so that the battery is going to be matched. This is going to make this MOSFET turn off uh, whenever we want that default condition. If you wanted the MOSFET to be on all, the, all of the time until you told it not to be off, you would put the resistor here. You would put this to ground or whatever source is less than VBAT enough to turn it on. Uh, but most cases that's not safe uh, because we want it to be off until we turn it on uh, in most cases. So. Anyway, we have 10K resistance here, and this will not affect the overall performance of uh, the signaling. So our instructions or our commands are going to be retained. Uh, but what will happen is that during the times where you get a zero here or a low potential, you're going to see some current that's going to sink into the driver, which is normal. Drivers are, are equipped to handle that sink current. Um, but uh, it's 1.2 milliamps and that might be a problem because if you if you are monitoring your energy usage or your current budget this may be too much so right now I have 12 milliamps of current going through the load and typically control sides of things are uh, three orders or two orders of magnitude or more lower than what your load is so here I am drawing about 10 percent of the current from the control side just for doing the default conditioning so a lot of times what designers will do is will increase the scale and what that does is it it changes the amount of current that can pass through that resistor so this is going to be 120 micro uh, microamps and that's a much more um, uh, I can make that argument a lot better as far as a budget is concerned if I'm gonna be if this is like dollars or money I can say well we're spending less money here and we're spending more of our money in the load which is where you would want it to be so you could do that and uh, you could go higher if you wanted to but I would caution going too high um, because if I go into the mega ohm range uh, that's gonna create that same effect here okay now it's 12 microamps and you might think okay I can go to 10 mega mega ohms but why stop there why, why not go to giga ohms but the problem is, is that eventually the resistance of, of this default resistor starts to compete with the resistance of the gate source junction and once you've done that the charge has difficulty um, to to dissipate or deplete so it removes your default conditioning function it anti-functions it um, because the charge is going to start to build up on this or the lack of charge is going to start to build um, or the you know another way of saying is that the charge is starting to build up in this direction as opposed to this direction there's all sorts of ways of talking about voltage potentials but um, the main thing is that if you have too much resistance here uh, it's almost as if you know, if I start increasing this to 10 mega ohms and higher and 15 mega ohms and giga ohms, it's almost as if that I have nothing there connected, and that's where I started. So uh, just keep in mind that you can't get greedy with your currents. It has to cost you something. And uh, usually in the microamp range or nanoamp range, you're, you're doing quite well. So having a mega ohm resistor there is probably fine. And 
the other thing is that mega ohm resistors cost more money, so just be careful of that. And they have more tolerances, so uh, generally plus or minus 5%, so you may not be able to guarantee that it's one mega ohm. It might be slightly less or, or more than it, up to 5% of its value. So those are, those are some other things that you can uh, consider when you're doing your default conditioning, but in most cases, you know, depending on what you're doing, especially if this is a motor application, 100K is fine, and you're good to go. Thanks for watching.